Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and as part of our prize for winning LEGO Masters Season 4, Robert and I got a private tour of the LEGO House in Billen, Denmark. So what is the LEGO House? Well, the LEGO House is a hub for LEGO creativity, housing a large LEGO museum in the basement floor, and all sorts of fun experience zones to try your hand at building your own creations and taking a look at some incredible mocks, including a massive LEGO City model. Now, what's even better is that on that same trip all the way back in September, we got another tour with a ton of other LEGO YouTubers and LEGO friends for Fan Media Days, which was a way for us to be able to see a ton of new 2024 LEGO sets. But during that tour, we got a chance to race each other, to engage in building competitions, and yes, to eat at the official LEGO restaurant, one of the only ones in the world that is outside of a LEGO land as a standalone LEGO themed restaurant, which was so much fun. So let's just jump right into all of that right now. So we actually got multiple opportunities to visit the LEGO house, but one of the most engaging and fun ones was when we actually got a private tour of everything the LEGO house had to offer. Now one of my favorite things to do in the LEGO house is check out the original LEGO museum. They kind of have this special vault underneath the LEGO house that showcases just a selection of some of the most popular and interesting toys from throughout LEGO's history. It's by no means a copy of everything, but it walks you through the different time periods of LEGO. Now I've done a full video on this particular museum on my channel before so we're not gonna rehash it in this particular video feel free to check out that video if you do want to see a very in-depth look at everything to see in the museum but for me it was really cool just trying to discover some of my favorite sets from all six original Bionicle Toa Mata on display to walking into this side room that had a showcase of some of the best Lego sets from all throughout Lego's history recapped in groups of different years this was easily one of my favorite parts of the exhibit because it actually showcases the original boxes alongside these sets themselves, which was also a really cool way to see how LEGO packaging and design differed from around the years, and it was really cool seeing different bits and pieces of Bionicle representation all throughout the exhibit itself. All in all, the LEGO house is a really fun place, but definitely the highlight, at least for me as someone who's so into LEGO history and loves learning about early days of LEGO, was this museum section underneath the house itself. It is in the basement floor area, and it is really, really cool. So I'm here in the LEGO house museum. It is underground. It is a selection of a ton of LEGO products, but of course, they're playing the OG Bionicle Toa Mata ad. You Good can see timing. up on the wall here, there is the original sketch for the Kenohi Bakari, the Dimensions, and of course, the OGs. Look at that. We have some of Christian Faber's original sketches here as well. We actually are getting the chance to meet Christian Faber in a few days, and I'm so excited because these are so, so cool. But look at that. I cannot wait. Let's go on and continue with the tour. Aside from visiting the museum, one of the coolest things that happened during my visit to the LEGO house is I got to meet legendary LEGO designer Marcus Robuler, who designed sets like Ninjago City Markets, Ninjago City Gardens, a ton of the LEGO Movie 2 sets, almost all of the LEGO house exclusive sets, some employee giveaways, just an absolutely legendary designer all around, and he even signed his minifigure tribute pirate set for me to take home personalized to Duck Bricks, which was so, so cool, and I'm very sad that that box got absolutely demolished in trend. It. So we are in the Lego House official store and just randomly some Lego designers have come in here and signed their Lego sets like this one right here without announcement or fanfare. I just happened to see it. So I'm definitely going to get the Wolverine Claws. I think that there's another one around here as well. If we can find... Battle of Endor Heroes Brickheads also signed, which is so, so cool. Obviously, I have a pretty crazy stack going on here, but we've got even more items to find. Let's see what else we can find that sign. Over here are some LEGO House exclusive sets. You can only get these at the LEGO House. And I can see that some of the ducks have been signed. Now, I'm Duck Bricks. I already got some of those signed. So, of course, those are in my pile because I just had to get the LEGO ducks from the, wooden from the LEGO House signed. But this is so crazy, just finding random signed sets at the LEGO House store. Let's go see what else we can see. So I just ran into Jolly at the Lego house randomly. I did yeah. not know you were going to no, be here. No. <laughs> but you said you've got something. Oh my goodness. So this is the completed set of the sports one. It's pretty hard to get because apparently it didn't sell well or something like that. Or, and it's just hard to find a brick link in general. So I was like, that's the only set he has missing in his collection, at least some brick sets. So, it's missing uh, in my collection. I do yeah. not own this set. So until I, I, now, I guess. I completed the challenge. 
You did. Finding one set that Duckwick doesn't own. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Yeah, Seriously, you're welcome. this means a lot. Right all right. It's all up to you. Uh, We're here at the minifigure factory. We've got a few to print, and so I'm going to go ahead and hit... Which one? The enter button. Right <laughs> the enter button. Yeah. Okay, we're going to activate it. Thank you so much. And there it goes. My goodness, our boy is stocking up. Let's see what is Rob getting. Lego house exclusive sets. Gotta get him here. Look at that. Robert buying a ton of Lego sets. That's blowing my mind. But after we got a chance to explore the store, it was time for the photo shoot to begin. Because we actually were brought there for LEGO Masters, which I can finally talk about now, and a lot of that was meant to actually just take pictures of us inside the LEGO house as well. I do not know where these pictures are going to be used, I really just have no clue why they need the footage or what exactly this is for, but hey, you know what, I am not complaining whatsoever. It was really cool to just go around and have folks take photos of us, thank you and big shout out to all of the amazing LEGO Masters staff and folks who kind of helped out and just had a really great time with us as we explored around and took fun pictures on the rooftop of the LEGO house, which may I add is an entire play area of its own. The way the LEGO house itself was designed is that different sections within the LEGO house were specifically made to evoke certain environments and details, which was really interesting and fun to just explore around the house itself. This was Robert's first time at the LEGO house. I think this was my third time there, but it was really cool just being able to even get access to areas that I personally had never been to in the past, and we even were provided with bikes so we could explore Billund and the LEGO headquarters area all on our own as well. All right, we're headed to a private tour of the Lego house. Are you excited? I'm super excited. All right, let's do this. After our photo shoot day, it was time to go back for day two to actually have the full-on private tour where we had a Lego expert show us around the Lego house. One of my favorite things to see is the Tree of Creativity sculpture, which is a gigantic Lego tree that stretches through the entirety of the center of the Lego house, and on the branches you can see homages to classic Lego themes. From city, to castle, to space, to friends, to pirates, there are all sorts of Lego themes represented on the Tree of Creativity, and I'm really excited to see how they fully expand this section in the future. For me, one of my favorite things was actually seeing a full-on environment being built showcasing these classic sets, some of which were on raised base plates or just on standard plates and whatnot, but everything was integrated into one scene, which really made these sets come alive and feel like they were part of one gigantic diorama. Just look at that pirate section there with Fort El Dorado, just an absolutely phenomenal set. Of course, you have the Imperial flagship versus the Black Seas Barracuda, and for the space section, we had some representation from all sorts of different LEGO space themes, from Mars Mission to Galaxy Squad to Insectoids, and yes, I guess that's supposed to be Elon's Roadster floating in space as well. They had pretty much everything to see there. Look at the lights on the Galaxy Explorer, just a phenomenal display, and one of my favorite things to see in the LEGO house. Another real highlight was being able to see the LEGO house dinosaurs, more on those later, and one of my favorite details was that for Halloween they had them decorated with pumpkins as well. But next up, we were asked to partake in a building competition where we had, I think, five minutes or like three minutes to build two Lego ducks. And you can see the green one was Robert's, and well, you can probably guess which one I made because, of course, I had to make Duckity the Duck Bricks mascot. After making our LEGO Ducks, we got a chance to explore around the LEGO house and take a look at some of the phenomenal mocks on display. I really love this classic space-themed Star Wars kind of style of diorama that mashes the two themes together. That was so cool, and they even had a whole futuristic display showcasing some vehicles of the future, which was really cool to see as a separate dedicated display in the LEGO house. Moving onwards from that, we got a chance to do one special activity, which was to command these Mindstorm-style robots to actually go around and do some drilling pool exercises. It was really cool to be able to actually program their movements and have them pick up stuff, and they actually had a full game where any guest of the house could go and actually interact with these vehicles themselves to move them around and to allow them to drill in. I actually might try to recreate these myself. Rob, you you cooking? I'm cooking some honey. All right, cooking up some honey. No, 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 no. All right, wrong way. Way. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> You see, the LEGO house is divided into experience zones, where you can just create your own different types of things and engage in different types of LEGO play. The next destination was a LEGO stop action photography station, which we absolutely had a ton of fun creating a movie of our own. Let's see our masterpiece right now. 
Yeah. We cooked, we cooked, we cooked, we cooked, we cooked, we cooked. All right, it's generating, it's generating. It... It's our amazing story here. Yo, does this open? Oh, shoot, we could have put you in the tube. All right, it's still. All right, all right, let it cook, let it cook. Oh no. Spooky music begins. <laughs> the zap. <laughs> D dead. I turned it to. I drank the potion. What is a throne? <laughs> <laughs> this unhinged story. <laughs> yo, yo, we're, we're we're such chads. Honestly, hire us, Hollywood. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, director. That's right. I di I directed this. I directed this. Uh, screw yes, yes. <laughs> Truly, the Adam Sorkin of our time. In another section of the Lego house, we got to create these funny looking creatures, of course I had to make the Duck Bricks logo as a creature of its own, slide it on into this scanning machine, and then it would transport our creatures when we hit the button all the way up into a magical dance platform, where you can see Mr. Duck Bricks logo himself being transported into the digital metaverse, and then beginning a dance routine, of course, because that's what all Duck Bricks logos can do. Alright, what is Robert cook? What, Robert, what, what is that? <laughs> Robert, what, what is- It's an elder's horror beyond the wildest imagination. <laughs> but why is it so slow? That's actually because of the music in the room. So like, oh. we have to hit at the same time at once. So oh. we have like a 10 second loop to get it in the round. And it's not. Is it? It has to take 40 seconds again. Interesting. And then you can follow like the Pac-Man around. And the elder bricks to come alive on the screen. It's devouring souls before it can become alive. Correct. <laughs> Are these all like clear one by one? Alright, alright, Rob, did you cook? And here we go. Oh my god! <laughs> Robert, what is, what is this? It's an eldritch horror. <laughs> The eyes are not even connected. Yeah, duck bricks coming in. <laughs> yo, ayo, ayo, ayo. Yo, Oh. Now they are dancing together. It, it do be duck breaks. <laughs> But after all that craziness in the Lego house, soon enough it was time for lunch at one of the coolest restaurants I've ever been to in my life. So the whole concept behind this restaurant is that you take this poly bag, mm -hmm. open it up, and you literally build your meal on this platform. So you stack the bricks together and it scans it in and it knows what you want to order. It's also all you can eat. So you basically, this just picks your first entree, but you can get unlimited for as many as you want. Oh. But this is just to kind of set the first one. Um, how, how do you pick the unlimited? Just ask them. You just ask them for more. I think you got the Danish menu as well. You probably want the English yeah, one. Like yeah, you this was. English? Yeah, last time the. Um, I think I got everything last time, but the meatballs were quite good. The salmon was good. The pork was good. Yeah, everything was quite good. So. Yeah, go ahead and build your meal. Okay, so we're starting off with the carrot, tomato, and cucumber for the veggies. I'm gonna get the chicken to start, but I'm probably gonna get one of everything because this is all you can eat. Let's see, what else do you have? You've got the fries as well as the naan bread. So let's go ahead and put this in. One of the coolest things about the mini chef restaurant at the Lego house is that your food is literally served to you by robots. Not really because they basically just push the food towards you, but it is really cool to actually see Lego style robots serving you the food, pushing your food towards you. And of course, on our way out of the Lego house, we had to bike back with a ton of Lego in tow. 
But the crazy thing is, that was not the only time that we went to the LEGO house, because for LEGO Fan Media Days, myself and a ton of other LEGO YouTubers got a chance to go on out once again. It coincidentally was on the exact same trip that we were there for LEGO Masters, we just had to pretend that we were also only just there for Fan Media Days. And as you can see, Duck Bricks can keep a secret. I did not tell a single one of the LEGO YouTubers as to why I was really there. Okay, like, maybe Jonathan knew, but Jonathan's a homie, he doesn't count. Let's go into our third day at the LEGO house. And on the third day, we actually got a chance to see some pretty interesting displays dedicated to the creation of the LEGO Disney collectible minifigure series. Oftentimes, the LEGO house will do these rotating displays that showcase some of the prototype models behind the creation of certain LEGO themes and items. One time it was the LEGO Movie 2 prototypes, another time it was the Ninjago prototypes, prototypes, which I really wish I saw both of those, and this time it was for the LEGO Disney collectible minifig series, where you could see the actual element sculpting and development behind creating these pieces as minifigures. I don't even know if this footage is available online, so I tried to get as much footage as I could of the actual design process behind how these are made. It was really interesting seeing a full-on documentary style video just going there and playing, showcasing some alternate designs, some facial expressions, and I'm sure that folks in the custom LEGO community are really gonna love this because now you have alternate expressions that you can use to create and add on to your Disney 100 minifigures that are officially designed by Lego. But yeah, there was a whole design process that showcased it from the initial early designs of sketching and coloring out the pieces to actually trying to sculpt the pieces onto the heads and then going from the digital to the physical, taking actual clay and working it into large scale Lego pieces. This covered the entire process of creating a custom Lego minifigure and it's really Really impressive just seeing the sheer amount of work that goes into making every single collectible minifigure series. Where you can see with this one, they were working off of source material, so they were really trying to create the perfect rendition of the Disney characters, and we even got to see some of these prototypes all the way in the display itself, which was such a blast. I think my favorite was actually being able to see the Mickey Mouse Sorcerer one because they really wanted to nail that one as one of the most iconic parts of LEGO history, and of course, seeing the different variations that the Pinocchio knows when through was also very funny because that was one of the very interesting deviations from the standard Lego minifigure to give a minifigure a nose, which is pretty unique. Now, it's pretty cool because they showcased even the process of dual molding hair, like Corella DeVille's hair had special dual molded elements, so they had like each half sculpted as one piece, which was very interesting. Even some development for the Lego Dalmatian piece, where it was walking, sitting, and standing, and overall it was just a really cool time being able to see the process of making a new minifig series. But of course, we also had to go back to Mini Chef and enjoy a meal with all of our LEGO friends, Ash and Flash, Just Do Good, Mini Superheroes Today. The whole crew was here, ready to enjoy a delicious meal. All right, the gang's all here at the LEGO House Mini Chef restaurant. Shout out to Ash and Flash for building. Thank you so much. This is the restaurant, so if you don't know, first of all, check out Mini Superheroes Today Real. He's got a real on Instagram explaining it all, but you build your own meal. Let's go check out what that means. Maybe it's not, I don't know, maybe they changed it. I feel like it's it chicken. Paprika, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows. Non bread, maybe? Non? I don't know. We're going to try that one more time. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Bro, that is like master builder level. <laughs> I'm in awe of your building skills. Thank you, thank you, I know. I mean, there's a reason why I'm on like a master, so. Uh, that's too good here. Um, I don't even know what I'm gonna get. What is this? Yeah, <laughs> 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 That's cool how they custom render it for every yeah. single meal. That's actually really cool. Yeah, they would have had to go through and make every variation possible. Unless there's some engine that's doing it. Just imagine the mini superheroes today breaking there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> 
the whole experience from building your own meal to actually oh, ordering it and then you. waiting for the robots to bring it to you down a spiral delivery system from start to finish is so much fun it's so engaging and it really gets you and I guess kids as well excited in the meal to come and I honestly hope that they'll expand this concept outside of just the Lego house I can definitely see this doing well at Lego lands and Lego discovery centers and all sorts of stuff like that because this was so much fun and I feel like it's a waste just to have it in one location but as of right now it is only available as kind of this special experience that you can do in the Lego house in Denmark and I'm really curious for folks in the comments have you been to the Lego house have you been to the mini chef what has your experience been like and one thing I do want to note I did state earlier in the video that it is all you can eat I've heard different things because we ate there like four or five times and for three out of the four times it was all you can eat but I think that maybe the servers might have been just being nice I don't really know to be honest because we went a couple of times and they're like we don't know what you're talking about this is like you can only order one of a certain type another time it was like oh you can only get unlimited of this kind but you can't get unlimited protein something like that I don't know so your mileage may vary depending on what server you get but it was still a really cool experience and it was actually pretty fairly priced usually for specialty restaurants like these where they have some sort of a gimmick to it the food is pretty expensive and not worth it but I seem to remember that the pricing was actually rather good so I definitely would recommend checking it out if you have time if you're in Billund and at the Lego house this is a really fun time now, just to go a quick overview of some of the food they had, they had some unhealthily delicious fries. Like, these fries were so tasty, something had to be wrong. Like, I have never had tastier fries before. Like, they were legitimately so good. They were warm, they were crispy, they were salted. Oh my goodness, I'm getting hungry just thinking about those fries and seeing them again. But they also had just a pretty good selection of all sorts of different items. From meatballs, to chicken, to salmon, to pasta, they had a pretty wide range of different types of food that you could get, and especially Especially when we were in Denmark, and honestly, there weren't a lot of food options around the Billund area, this was an absolute joy because it was just a really fun time to be able to just try all the different types of food they had available. Of course, I love food. I have a separate channel called Food Bricks, which I'm probably going to turn into an Instagram page now that I mention it. Robert also loves food, so it was a really, really good time to be able to just explore around. And even better, because the next day we went back one more time for a special private Lego house special breakfast for the Lego fan media folks. So you can see Bricks by Mind, Sean there, and Jordan, the head of the Lego Ambassador Network, were all in attendance. Basically, every single one of the ambassadors there for fan media days had a special breakfast at the Lego house. And this was really cool because it was even more special than normal. They had a delicious cheese spread. Like, oh my goodness, that brie looks so good right now. And it was just a really fun time because we got a chance to meet folks it was celebrating the birthday of the lego house so that was why it was a really special breakfast and we were all invited to celebrate which was super cool getting the new mugs up here we did the changeover last week on tuesday we had some of the former exhibitors to uh, come here take down their models wrap them up and then we will ship them home to them then uh, wednesday we had 15 new exhibitors arriving here to be from 11 different countries from all over the world Australia, Canada, South Korea, Hong Kong, USA from all over the world so they just entered last week and uh, we started the process Wednesday morning I picked them up at the hotel 8 o'clock and then we started up here boxes, bubble wrap, cling film everything all over the place um, so the exhibitors came here and just to jump a little bit back in time the process actually started years ago because we have Stuart and uh, Jan Beyer actually scouting for uh, for exhibitors and mocks and uh, and the exhibitors up here are uh, purely headhunted from uh, from our side so uh, one year ago we did a list with the exhibitors that we wanted it to uh, to exhibit up here, contacted them just one year ago, and then we celebrated last week. So uh, just to take you a bit back in time, so uh, we flew everybody in here and uh, checked them in at the hotel. Had the day that I uh, that I uh, that I explained about last Wednesday. We uh, we gathered them up here for the entire day Wednesday had started out with four hours of rebuilding uh, and, uh, and had lots of fun. 
had a tour around the house looking and presenta presenting each other's model and uh, ended up with a celebration dinner in the evening. Thursday, fan day, and the first time that uh, the fans uh, were actually invited to see the mocks up here. And the first uh, opening day for others were Saturday. So the mocks up here are still brand new and to you as well. Um, so, uh, so it was a true pleasure having you here. As you already know, this room up here is a true uh, tribute to the, the creativity that the Lego brick brings. And it is a true pleasure working with this masterpiece gallery because it is really a part of the base and the fundament of the entire Lego house. So uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Go take a look at the marks around here. As I said, we have 15 exhibitors from all over the world. And there are so many amazing details in each single model that we do have up here. So I really hope you will uh, you will enjoy it. Stuart and Gide, they were of course both here last week when we installed the models. So if you do have any like question regarding the exhibitor or the models, then uh, then please ask uh, ask them or or me if there's anything you'd like to know specifically about. And, uh, an exhibition. So I hope you will enjoy it. As I said when you just uh, came asking if you could do photos and video, uh, you can. Just be aware of that right now we have cleaning lights on because cleaning they are doing their thing before we are opening in, uh, in 50, 50 minutes. So um, that's uh, why the light is as it is. But uh, feel free to, to explore the mods. How many of you have seen them already? Oh, not that many. Oh, One third? Well, uh, enjoy then. Enjoy. And please ask questions if you do you have go? any. No. Do you have any questions like uh, while we're standing here around Masterpiece Gallery or the process? What, what, what? Um, how do how do they uh, take it? Yeah. I can, uh, yes, I can take that one. Um, mostly bribery. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's um, we we have a. a we reach out to the Lego Ambassador Network and we ask the ambassadors to uh, nominate um, some candidates from the, the group, um, as well as uh, I, every day I check fan media, so I'm looking at a lot of your your, uh, your, your articles uh, all day, so I'm also looking out that way to, uh, to see what fan content there potentially is out there. And then of course I'm going to a lot of fan events every year, so I'm spotting uh, new mocks and, and new uh, new builders and uh, new creatives out there that I think would make a, a good um, contribution to the, the Lego House uh, Masterpiece Gallery collection. We try to put together uh, as broad a collection as possible, so um, we we sort of really try to demonstrate the endless possibilities of the brick. So we try to create many different uh, styles. We also try to represent uh, geographically as wider. And collection as, as possible uh, as well. So all the different styles, all the different people that go in to make this uh, this collection that we put together in the Masterpiece Gallery. I mean, when we uh, when we when Kel first had the idea of doing the the Lego House, one of his visions was that to have a permanent place where the work of the Lego fan community could be exhibited, and that's why we, we created the, the Masterpiece Gallery to, to to showcase the amazing creativity of, of Lego fans from all around the world. So as was just explained to us, we were some of the first to be able to see some of the newest mocks on display at the LEGO house. What they do is they have a program where special mocks are chosen and flown out to the LEGO house to be put on display, including some builds from our fellow LEGO Masters Season 4 contestant Kelly, who we also met up with in Denmark during that exact same time because she was there to display her mocks right at the LEGO house. So that was really cool, but of course my favorites were the ones that used a ton of Bionicle parts and were humanoid figures, and it was really cool just getting to explore with a ton of other LEGO folks from around the LEGO community. One of the really fun things they have is a place where you can just take over the LEGO house itself with your gigantic face plastered over the screens, so of course Duck Bricks had to step in and do a full takeover of this area of the LEGO house, and aside from seeing the dinosaurs, we just had a really great time and soon enough it was time to move on to the next station. <laughs> Duck Bricks cannot be overtaken. No, 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 Rob is taking over. 
That's really cute. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Calm down. Three. Oh. Yes, we Yeah, let's go. Yes. Three, two, one. No, this is it, you know. Winning I was build? trying to find a way to make this the center part, but like there's no like pole connection. So <laughs> yeah. I was just at the last one. I'm like, I guess I'm gonna have to put this in the middle. You know, do what I mean. All right, he's gonna win. Oh, <laughs> So what exactly is going on here? Well, the Lego house has a special racing section where you can build your cars and figure out who will cross the finish line first. And honestly, I was actually doing pretty well. I demolished Robert, I beat out the competition, and soon it came down to me versus Tiago, at which point I knew it was Jover. Because if I'm going up against Tiago in a building competition, we know who's winning that one. And I'm gonna be honest, it's not me. Oh, <laughs> oh get wrecked. Get wrecked. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> After suffering humiliating defeat at the hands of a former LEGO set designer, we got a chance to go to one of my favorite sections in the entire LEGO house, which is the World City area. What they've done is they've made this absolutely gargantuan city layout. It is really cool because they have different day and night cycles where sometimes it'll be nighttime and you can see all the lights turn on, and then the lights will come on, the sun will go up, and then you can see what the city looks like over the course of the day. This was so, so cool, and easily one of my favorite things to see when I'm in the LEGO house. It is probably one of the greatest LEGO city builds I have ever seen. Now, what's really interesting is that we even had a scavenger hunt here, so we were basically tasked to go around and hunt down different individual items hidden around the cities split up into teams so that was so much fun and after we did that we then had a building competition where thankfully this time Tiago was on my team so I mean you know who's winning this one so <laughs> Oh, 10 points, group number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that was group number two. two. <laughs> that was such a good call. Yeah, Tiago goes. Tiago. <laughs> okay, are we ready to find the winner? No, yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. And the winner is. <laughs> group number one! Yeah, let's go! And in second place, it was group number two! Yeah. <laughs> three! Yeah. So we have. And there's the whole gang with our bootleg LEGO Masters trophy. Of course, this was such a fun time at the LEGO house. We got to spend basically four days here and we were in and out on all the other days. So it kind of became literally a house to us. Like it was a second home to all of us while we were in Bill in Denmark. And I honestly will remember this trip for the rest of my life. It was one of the most fun times I had just going around with other folks who were equally as passionate about LEGO as I was and doing all this fun stuff together. I'm really excited because we're gonna do it all again this next coming year in September. We have already made plans to do this again, so quite excited. Maybe not to quite the same level because of course we were the LEGO Masters winners there for the first time, so we had so much stuff to do for that. But now we can just kind of take it easy and relax and enjoy Fan Media Days this coming September 2024. So stay tuned for a lot more stuff coming out about that. Jonathan aka Mini Superheroes Today and I are going on a crazy European trip beforehand that we literally just got tickets for at the time of recording this, so we are so hyped for that and stay tuned because there are going to be so many more lego adventures coming this year i hope you enjoyed our look at our lego house private tour and experience and let me know in the comments if you have been to the lego house what is your favorite thing to do there what has your experience been like and are you planning on going in the future and hey if you are around the lego house in september of 2024 maybe i'll see you there Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this special video. Of course, very cool to see so many crazy creations, the Lego Museum, the actual Lego restaurant area, just a ton of fun stuff to do overall. 
All right, and with that, we have summed up our adventure through the Lego house, both the private tour as well as our entire day there with the other Lego influencers and YouTubers. This was so much fun, and let me know down in the comments if you have been to the Lego house, what has been your experience there, and do you plan to go in the future? I know I'm going to be back same time this year in September. I'm certainly going to be returning for fan media days. Already got my tickets and hotels, so very excited for that, and let's go. See you next time.